Captain Bill Gustin of the Miami-Dade Fire Department is uh, going to review how to get lines into service in multifamily occupancies. This is an outsider's perspective and maybe shows a couple tips or tricks or other methods that may not uh, be something you have in your toolbox right now or something you've thought of. So just take a few minutes, review what he has to say and uh, show, and uh, maybe it'll help you uh, become a little more proficient or give you some new ideas to practice and train with for use on the fire ground. Thank you. Hello, brothers and sisters of the fire service, and a special hello to my brothers and sisters on Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. I'm very proud to teach for Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Our subject today is hose line operations for fires in multiple dwellings. These would be apartment buildings, condos, hotels, motels, buildings that are typically by height are not required to have standpipes. However, a lot of these same tactics apply for the lower floors of standpipe equipped buildings where we decide it's easier to stretch off the apparatus than to stretch from a standpipe. A little bit about myself. Uh, I was until a few years ago a resident of Palm Beach County, so I am familiar somewhat with your department and I know what a world-class organization it is and again how proud I am to be able to teach for Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. I am a captain with the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Department a little bit south of here and I've been there for 36 years. I've been in the fire service since as you can see this young fellow right there since 1973. So that gives me 41 years on the job and yes I'm still kicking because I love this job. I love this profession and I love the people in this profession and that's why I continue to work and why I teach. There are two key ingredients to having a successful operation in a multiple family dwelling and that is size up and that is pre-fire planning. The time to decide the tactics and strategy to be used at a fire in a multiple dwelling is three o'clock in the afternoon during pre-fire planning. Not three o'clock in the morning when smoke is showing and people are at the windows trying to get out of their building. You have to know before you go. You may not even know where to spot your apparatus until you actually get into the complex. When you have hallways that are this long, it's very difficult for you to intelligently fight the fire without any pre-fire information. That's why pre-fire planning is absolutely key in these buildings. Again, the time to choose, the tactics and strategy to be used is during pre-fire planning. Let's look at some considerations for a hose stretch that is specific to fires in multiple dwellings. The first is the location of the fire, which may not be readily apparent when you arrive. You may, may have to take some looking. Do not allow the police or civilians to do your size up for you. They could lead you into an area that, yes, there could be smoke showing, yes, there could be fire showing, but you could be hundreds of feet away from where you need to be. The path to the fire, which doorway, stairway, hallway are you going to use to reach the fire? What is the condition of the attack stairwell? Is it closed, enclosed? Is it, can you use it in an area of refuge? Or is it full of smoke like a chimney? And understand rapidly how quickly a, a, a stairway can turn into a chimney by just simply opening a door to a fire floor that's full of smoke. Does the stairway have a well? In other words, can you stand at the bottom of the stairway and look straight up in an area that is large enough to accommodate a hose line? If you are, that's great. One 50-foot section could take you as high as the fifth floor. What access do you have in the stairwell? We're lucky here in South Florida that most of our stairwells on multiple family dwellings open to the outside. Therefore, we can open that door and go directly from the apparatus into the stairwell. What kind of hallways do we have? Is it your uh, exterior hallway, balcony type building, which is so common in the Sun Belt? Or is it an interior hallway, which makes operations a lot more difficult and dangerous? What is the condition of the fire apartment? Is the fire being contained within the fire apartment with the apartment door closed and intact? If it is, that's great. Chances are great that we can stretch directly to the fire apartment with a dry hose line, pull up additional hose, charge it, and then force entry. The methods that we're going to use to get that hose line up to the upper floor, would it be a conventional stairway stretch, which a lot of us haven't done since the fire academy? Is it gonna be a well stretch? Are we gonna use a rope? Are we gonna take it up a ladder? Are we gonna use a pipe pole? Again, time to choose this tactic is during pre-fire planning. Does the building have a standpipe? 
Just because a building has a standpipe doesn't necessarily mean you have to use it. You get a fire and it's within range where you can drop a rope bag and hoist a pre-connect, why in the world would you want to rely on an inherently unreliable standpipe? Stretch off your apparatus when you can. Sprinklers are great, but keep in mind, brothers and sisters, that when a building is fully sprinklered, the fire code allows a variance. It allows the minimal travel distance between the apartment and the closest means of egress to be 200 feet, which means your stairways could be 400 feet apart. That could be a hetch, heck of a long hose stretch and the amount of hose. And we're gonna look at a reliable method for accurately determining, not estimating, accurately determining the amount of hose necessary to reach the fire apartment or room and additional hose necessary to penetrate any point of that apartment. The number of firefighters, brothers and sisters, don't make the mistake of attempting a hose advance that requires six firefighters when you only have three. You're gonna to have to try something different. For instance, you arrive alone on a fire at 4.30 in the morning in a building full of sleeping elderly people. You better do something fast. And if you don't have the personnel to rapidly engage in an interior attack, then what's the next best thing? You're gonna to have to hit it from the outside. You wouldn't be watching this presentation today if you weren't a student of the fire service and you understand that attacking a fire from the outside, directing a stream from the outside is no longer something that is unacceptable in the fire service. It's quite acceptable. In fact, if directing a stream from the outside is so bad, why do fire departments why have they developed on floor below nozzles for directing streams into a apartment when there's a wind driven fire? What about this wind speed and direction? Yes, it will have a bearing on our attack. Our strategy for the most part is going to be protect in place. We do not have the resources on most apartments to physically rescue people from harm. We're gonna take the harm away from the people by putting out the fire. If the fire is in a public hallway, we're gonna rely and hope we can rely on the compartmentation afforded by a residential occupancy to keep the fire out of the apartment. You're gonna get 911 calls for people trapped. They can't go out into a smoky hallway. Are they complete, completely safe in their apartment? No, they're not completely safe, but they're a heck of a lot safer in their apartment than they're gonna be in a smoky hallway kind of get a kick out of this when you, a fire alarm goes off in a residential building full of old people. There's a fire in this building. Evacuate the building. Do not use the elevators. Well, that's real comforting to this gentleman right here in a motorized wheelchair. Remember that big city tactics require big city resources. Again, don't attempt a hose stretch or advance that requires more firefighters than you have which means that your staffing may indicate your tactics. Maybe the best you can do with the limited resources you have is hit the fire from the, uh, with a straight stream from below, throw a ladder up and finish the job. Now let's make a distinction here between stretching and advancing. Stretching is what we do with an uncharged line and you can stretch a lot of uncharged line with just a few firefighters, but once that line becomes charged, we're then advancing and you're gonna need a firefighter at just about every change of direction, change of elevation, every friction point. All right, the first type of building that I wanna look at is very common in the Sun Belt. This is the exterior hallway building. See them all over South Florida. And we're gonna say that we're within the range of a 200 foot pre-connect. In this case, an officer and firefighter will ascend up to the fire floor, right to the fire floor, and if it's just a second floor fire, reach down with a pipe pole and lift up the nozzles. If you're above the second floor, throw the rope down, tie some type of quick knot that can be easily untied and tied. Try to bring the hose up underneath the railing to eliminate that severe uh, possible kink that could occur when the hose goes over the railing. Here we're knocking a, a section of railing out. Here we're not because we're operating in uh, drilling in an occupied apartment. Now, you're gonna be hoisting this hose at a reasonable distance upwind of the fire. And as we stretch 
towards the fire, be careful. Do not pass or stand in front of a window that could possibly vent. You're going to have to stop and then pull up enough hose to reach the fire apartment from that window, plus at least an additional 50 feet to hit any point in the average size apartment. You must secure your hose to the railing before it's charged. If it's not, you're going to end up with all your hose down in the parking lot. All right, sometimes you have to be meticulous when if you have slippery hose and you're not able to secure a girth hitch behind a double coupling. Here we are, we're masking up, ready to go. Est out, masked up, and ready to make our attack. Now, what if we're beyond the range of our pre-connect? In this case, when pre-connects fall short, one option is to stretch two and a half or three inch hose. Now, I would not bring the gated Y up onto an exterior hallway. They, they, this almost turned out to be ugly. There's a department that configures a hose bed with a modified Minuteman so they can bring a three inch line into a courtyard and at the base of the building, then they will lower down hose. In this case, this is going to require two companies. The company that's gonna go up into the building, we're gonna call them the firefighters. And then the mules that are gonna bring up that, that relatively large diameter hose, two and a half or three inch hose with a gated Y, and we're gonna drop hose from say the second floor and the third floor, connecting it to a 100 foot high rise or extension pack. Uh, again, we secure it with a tubular webbing. And in this case, we could drop hose line if we had fire extending from the second to the third. What about garden apartments? What we're talking about here is a building that has open or semi-open breezeways or landings where you'd have four or two apartments per landing. In this case, if it's the second floor, here we're bringing it up to the mid landing between the second and first floor. We'll pull up enough hose that we will have enough hose to maneuver within that apartment. Average size apartment, 50 feet. Notice we bring the hose in on the hinge side of the door. This way, we know that that door in an apartment is gonna open up against the wall. When it opens up against the wall, we got a straight shot. If we brought it in on the latch side, we may have to take an immediate 180 degree turn as soon as we made entrance. Again, we're gonna secure our line. Now, this is a Cleveland load or a coil load where the hose is coiled around the nozzle. This is ideal for this type of application if you have adequate pressure in hose that is inherently kink resistant. Let's talk about courtyard apartments. You're looking at the fire, but you're not in the entrance of the building. The entrance of the building is remote from your apparatus. You're in a driveway or a parking lot. In this case, could you ladder an adjoining apartment? Take a hose line up a ladder, go through the adjoining apartment, out into the exterior hallway, walk your nozzle in 50 feet out to the door of the fire apartment, secure it, charge it, and then make your entry. Again, the hose line is coming up the side of the building through an adjoining apartment, out into the public exterior hallway and into the fire apartment. Okay, let's see that we've got an interior hallway building and it's dirty, it's full of smoke because the door to the fire apartment is open. In this case, these firefighters are playing it safe. They're taking their line up the stairs, through the adjoining apartment, down the public hallway and straight into the fire apartment. Don't ever attempt to flake out hose line that is uncharged in a smoky hallway. You won't have your protection that you need and you can't see what you're doing. Here, we're laddering a apartment, laddering the balcony. We drop a rope, we bring up our hose line. Now here's a different apartment here. It's a burned out apartment where we're drilling, but same scenario. Bring the hose line up, check the door to the public hallway. It's an enclosed hallway. The door is cool, we open up the door, uh-oh, the hallway is full of smoke. In this case, we are not gonna leave the refuge of this fire uh, adjoining apartment unless we have a charge line. So we're gonna pull up enough hose to A, reach from the adjoining apartment to the fire apartment, and B, enough hose to maneuver through the average size apartment, which is gonna be about 50 feet. I realize this looks a little easier than it would be with furniture, and it is. We're gonna flake out our hose, we're going to secure it with a tubular webbing. Then we're going to mask up, glove up, hood up, charge the line, flow the line before we leave the refuge of the adjoining apartment. We open up the door. We have the hose line secure. We make our way down the hallway. This is a three firefighter revolution. That is the nozzle man, 
the officer and the mule that is going to at first position himself at the door to the adjacent apartment, pulling the hose from the adjacent apartment into the public hallway as the nozzle team moves down the hallway, as the nozzle team reaches the door to the fire apartment, they'll operate the nozzle on the fire. The mule will go back and grab the coupling back 50 feet from the nozzle, walk it up to the door up to the fire apartment. Now we have enough hose to maneuver through the average size apartment and the mule can now take a position at the door to the fire apartment. So what you see here is nozzle firefighter, officer and mule which is working at the door position of the fire apartment. All right, this is a little different. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the Cleveland load. We pulled our pre-connect, it's uncharged, we unscrew the nozzle, we add either 50 or 100 feet of, uh, of Cleveland load, in this case, preferably, preferably 100 feet. We make our connection, we charge our line, and we're ready to leave the refuge of the adjoining apartment. Now we're talking about interior hallway buildings. You're going to have to team up. I embrace the concept of the engine or a fire company teaming up with the medical rescue. That gives us a pretty potent firefighting force. Forcible entry tools, we're taking up at least 200 feet of hose. Even though we're not on a standpipe equipped building, we're taking the 200 feet of hose so we can extend off of a pre-connect or a gated Y. We first have to locate that fire and then we will designate and evacuate the attack stairwell. But we first have to locate the fire. Now here this officer is taking a look from the refuge of a st closed stairway down the hallway. This is another technique. This is where you're gonna use a rope bag and you're gonna proceed down the hallway. You tie off the end of the rope bag on the hinge of the enclosed stairwell door and close the door. Keep the smoke out of the stairwell. Now, you've already familiarized yourself with the floor below. You see that the hallway is, let's say, 150 feet long. You know you have 100 feet of rope in your rope bag. So, it stands the reason if you run out of rope in your rope bag, the fire has to be closer to the other stairwell because the hallway, the stairwells are 150 feet apart. So, you may have a choice. Connect another rope or wind the whole thing back up, go down to the floor below and come up the other stairwell. If you find the fire, of course, close the door to the fire apartment. Now, in this case, would you be comfortable going down a hot, smoky hallway? Obviously, the door to the fire apartment is open, and that's why the hallway is dirty. In this case, are there other ways that we can determine the location of the fire? Yes. We've got a visual from the outside. Command engine three, where the fire looks to be 60 feet from the Charlie Bravo corner. Okay, now we've got an idea how much hose we're going to need to reach that fire. What about if the fire is in apartment 555? Could we look? at apartment 455, find 455, chances are it's directly below 555. Brothers and sisters, most of us are on departments that do not have the staffing or the hose bed configurations that lend themselves to a conventional stairway stretch. In other words, laying hose up the stairs, laying it on the tread. Let's look at some alternatives. Could you drop a rope from a window. Where are we going to hoist it? Could we hoist it directly to the fire floor? Yes, you could, under two conditions. One, the window is, the hallway is clear. The door to the fire apartment is closed. And secondly, that the window is at or near the stairway. So if you get into trouble, if you run out of air, you follow the hose line back and you're by a stairway. That's very important. Otherwise, you're gonna follow the hose line back and you're gonna to have to jump out the window. If the fire apartment door is intact, bring the hose line up to the door to the fire apartment, bring up at least 50 feet, tie off your line, charge it, and then you'll make your attack. Could you do the same thing with two and a half or three inch hose? Yes, you could, but you're gonna to have to pull up at least uh, 50 feet of hose. Remember, it is critical in this situation to control that door and do not open that door until everybody is, you've flowed the line, you're hooded up, masked up, gloves on, ready to go, and all occupants and non-combatants are off that floor because when you open that door, it's gonna get ugly. 
Well, that's about all the time that we have for today for this presentation. You know we just scratched the surface on this subject. Uh, this is a small portion of a much larger program. I'd like to come back someday and we'll continue it. Just remember, brothers and sisters, how critical it is, your secret to success, your ingredients for success with fires and multiple dwellings is extensive pre-fire planning and size up. You got to know before you go. Thank you very much. God bless you and may he keep you safe in our most noble profession.